Tonight on The Henry Rollins Show, writer, comedian, and co-star of The King of Queens, Patton Oswalt, is here to talk about his life in comedy. Damian Marley is going to join Heidi Mae for an exclusive musical performance, and I'll tell you who killed the electric car. Don't go away, it's gonna be a great show. Summer is here and we can look forward to so much great stuff. I hope it never ends. More DVDs of drunken co-eds pulling their shirts off. Gallons of alcohol mixed with food exiting the mouths of young men with baseball caps on backwards. President Bush will take a long vacation in Crawford, Texas and sit on the front porch with Scott McClellan and remember the good old days when the president's approval ratings were less than terrible and hope that Scott's replacement, Tony Snow, can somehow turn things around for an administration sorely in need of some credibility. Big budget blockbusters will explode on screens all over America as Hollywood desperately tries to have huge first weekend grosses before the critics get a chance to rip the films to shreds. Basic Instinct 2 will hit DVD and I will buy it used and call it the best comedy film of 2006. People who wolf down fistfuls of diet pills will cram themselves into embarrassing swimsuits with a vengeance, oil themselves up and hit the shore so they can get to work on their future melanomas that our tax dollars will be marshaled to gouge out of their skin and lawyers prepare to sue the sun for possessing harmful rays. Plaque will cling to arterial walls as Americans stuff themselves with processed foods, the price of gasoline will rise and rise, and immigration protests will rage as the undocumented make like lemmings to the land of milk, honey, and employment opportunities for jobs that Americans just won't do. Ken Lay will continue to have no idea what the hell happened at Enron and hope that the jury will say, that's cool, Kenny boy, and let him go and hang out on the front porch in Crawford with George and Scott and join in on that recap of the good old days. Our nation's finest will continue to come back from Iraq in stretchers and boxes, and amazingly, Iraq will somehow still be on the brink of a civil war. China will continue to bitch slap the American economy, and Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad just might get a chance to find out how many bunkers a bunker buster bomb can bust. And by the end of the summer, it will be a year since Katrina ravaged Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, and we can all marvel at the stunning lack of progress in that region. And when we've recovered from all that, we'll only have a few days to harvest our grief, rage, and frustration, and direct it at innocent people as we slam into the five-year anniversary of September 11th. But until then, lower your expectations, set your phasers on stun, and let the good times roll. Joining me now is stand-up comedian, writer, actor, and creator of the Comedians of Comedy Tour, Patton Oswalt. Patton's taken some time between comedy shows to come and talk to us today. Patton, thanks for being on the show, man. Thanks for making me seem busy. This is oh, great. Well, you're very busy, man. Taking time between his gigs. Yeah, yeah. I, I bought comics today, and then later I'm going to go to Del Taco. That's my schedule today. There you go. That's well, my full day runner, so thanks. <laughs> thanks for making time. I appreciate it, man. I've never met you before, but I've seen you. Uh, saw you on your Comedy Central special, and yeah. I've played your record, the one CD version, uh, feeling kind of Patton. <clears throat> right, which is... There's another version of that called 222. Yes, which my friend just got through the, uh, he got it from your site or whatever right. site it was and said it's it's just good, good stuff. Yeah, it's a two and a half hour nonstop just on stage talking and people handing me up alcohol. And oh. then at the end, I kind of can't talk. So then that's how when, the, when it ends. Oh, I so it was see. fun. It was just fun to kind of, at that point, that was my first CD. So I wanted to just blow out my pipes and burn all of my material onto CD so that I would then have to start from scratch. Right. It's like Benny Goodman cutting the calluses off of it. I just call myself Benny Goodman, for God's sakes. That's what I just compared myself to, my ego. Good Lord. Um, <laughs> I wanted to, like, 
have a cliff to my back again. So right. that's why I did the CDs the way I did. Um, let's let's switch Doesn't gears this for look a minute. like a, a summit between Cut and Pudgy right now, where we're <laughs> like representing both camps. We're trying to <laughs> trying to broker peace between the fatties and the Cut people. <laughs> this is so amazing. Um, here's the question yeah, I wanted yeah. to ask you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, it's there seems to me that there's a lot of brutality in the comedy circuit just because, you know, tonight comedy, <laughs> motherfucker. I'm I'm tired. I've been yeah. working all day. Make me laugh, bitch. <clears throat> well, I'll, I'll let you in on something. That never ends. No matter how big you get, you will always, every now and then, you'll run into these angry crowds who are desperate to have fun. Nothing's worse than people desperate to have fun. Right. Um, I just did a club on the tour in Champaign, Illinois, and the guy that books the club, and he's a nice guy, heart was in the right place, sent out an email to everyone going, these comedians love drunken hecklers. Oh, God. This one guy was yelling out all of my punchlines because he's my biggest fan. So before I could say a punchline, he would yell it out. Like I would, you know, and- That's a nightmare. <clears throat> it gets worse. So afterward, I'm meeting, you know, people and signing stuff and saying hi. And he comes up and he goes, hey man, I just, I had a great time at your show. I'm <laughs> such a huge fan and I'm just, I, it just meant a lot to me to get to help you out like that. You know, I mean, you're like my favorite comedian. I said, you know, you can't yell my punchlines out. It, it kind of deballs the act. There's no, you know, there's no surprise there. No, no, that no. I was helping you out, man. That's you know, because I'm really into your stuff, and I'm yelling out. I'm like, and then we go back and forth, and then he finally holds up his left arm, which is severed below the elbow. It's just this much, and he goes, "This is why I get to fuck with your act, motherfucker." Like holds up this severed arm, and then I, <clears throat> at that point, I just said, "I didn't cut your arm off." I mean, that's terrible that happened to you, but you don't get to yeah. either, either, either. What if I did cut his arm off? Let's say I had a blackout when I was in college and I cut this guy's arm off. Okay. Then that's the <laughs> lamest revenge in history. I'll wait, I'll memorize his act, I'll and I'll yell famous. it out, and then I'll shove my severed arm and it's like, like the dumbest guy on the planet. So that's the kind of stuff we have to deal with all the time. So. Yeah, and you've been all over America, and I don't know how right. much you've traveled abroad, but you know, touring as you do, you've seen a lot of America. My question to you is, do you, th you know, s someone in, in some part of Europe might look at America and go, wow, they're, they're all, you know, ignorant and driving Humvees and they, they right. never travel and they're, right. they're terrifying. What do you think? Do you think Americans are ignorant? I think that a lot of, there's a lot of willful ignorance in America. I actually think that Americans are a lot smarter than anyone gives them credit for, including themselves. And I think that there was a time, and you can, you can see this in people when you meet them, where they began to realize things, stuff, a few notions began to dawn on them about the bigger picture. And some people went, and, but that's a painful thing to realize. And they willingly shut it off because it made them feel better to not think about things. Mm. Doesn't it feel like these last six years, we've been watching our country talk its way out of a DUI, like every single day, like this evidence just keeps coming out. And not just a DUI, but there's like, dead bodies on the highway and there's a car on fire and like Bush is the guy holding the keys and we're like, hey, I think he killed it. And we're just watching him talk his way out of it. And people are so fascinated that it's a fantasy to go, wow, you can be that dumb and still run the world and not get into trouble. And there's this fantasy of watching someone like George Bush, who's just as inept as they are, but keeps his job, his wife is behind him. You know what I mean? He, he is the president. And they're like, God, I wish my life was like that. Or no matter how bad I fuck up, I, I wake up and I have my job. You know, and I'm, nothing's being threatened. So the only way to have that is willful, aggressive, and very active ignorance. Because you, you watch the Bush administration, like, wait, I, that would have got me fired. That would have got me put in jail. It, exactly. Yeah. And, and they keep going, we didn't do that. No, no, there's a dripping dagger in your hand, and the guy's going, you stabbed me, you stabbed me. Nope, economy's strong. Like, no, it's not. I think there's a lot of the population that's actually impressed. When they, when they watch them walk, talk away, they're like, damn, that, God, he was so fucked, and he somehow squeaked out of it. Like, there's a part of the nation that I think is impressed by that. Yeah, almost like when you, you see Gotti. You know, like right. going, to, going into the courthouse. You're like, yeah, get out of it, man. He <laughs> literally has like a severed head and a bowling bag as he walks yeah. in. You're like, yeah. what a ballsy motherfucker. This yeah. is awesome. So, I mean, that's, I think that's where we are right now, where we, we just, there is something to be celebrated about such bold evil, just happy. It's almost like the way Vincent Price used to play villains, like just really open and like, hey, I'm sawing people in half and torturing kittens. You're like, 
that guy's kind of cool, like, because he's so nuts. So if we, <clears throat> if we've not hit rock bottom yet, and, and yeah, I know. keep that's the thing. What is rock bottom going to well, be? Well, what happened to rock bottom? Well, what do you think it will? What will that look like? I don't know. Uh, you and I have become nostalgic for rock bottom. We're like two old guys and we're going, remember rock bottom? Remember you used to be able to hit that? What <laughs> happened to rock bottom? It's gone away. I don't think that, maybe there's not a bottom anymore. Maybe it's just, we're just gonna keep hit until we hit terminal velocity and then we're just gonna dissipate into the infinite. Where, where, where do you hit the point where things break down? And, and there's nothing wrong with things breaking down every now and then, but it's almost like we're driving a car, the hood's flown off, the doors are gone, the engine's on fire, there's no wheels, and somehow we're still going forward and we just want to see where it ends? Yeah. Is that the fascination? Also, doesn't it feel like to me like if, if you've gained weight or you're, or you're gonna do, like make some change, like on Monday I'm gonna start a diet. Well, it's Thursday. Like, all right, well I'm just gonna eat and drink until mo Monday I'll clean it all up. So I think now people are here like, well gas is running out and the farmer's going, well, you know what, I'm just gonna drive my SUV until the air literally catches on fire and then I'll <laughs> buy a hybrid car, but I'm just gonna take this till things are so awful. You, you know, that there's, we, we feel we're so giddy in our helplessness right now, kind of the whole world, and people are just like, well, there's nothing you can do. What are you going to do about it? Well, there's, that, there's some, I think that on, on the gravestone of, of the world, when, it, when it's all a smoking cinder, it's going to be a, a tombstone that says, nothing you can do but pray. I think that is like the worst thing. We're just going to go, nothing you can do but pray. Oh, my God, there's so many more things you can do besides praying. Until you get to prayer, there's actually eight things you can probably do. Right. Nah, nothing you can do but pray. Yeah, you're just gonna pray. I don't get it. Um, but I love it. Yeah. Good times for me. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, you know. It, hey, do you think the music's gonna get better like it did during the um, the first Bush administration? Remember how how that spawned the whole like the grunge movement and the comeback of punk and like all that stuff? Like, um, I'm kind of waiting. Uh, for more of a, u a unified, catastrophic thing to happen to music in light of, I, I want to see some people, some music that's this, you know, like that's like an airstrike. I'm kind of waiting for like a Rage Against the Machine on Angel Dust. Right. It, it might be like System of a Down. You know, it, it yeah. might be you know who are great, but something that's just got more teeth to it that has more that, fury. Uh, yeah, I love System of a Down and Queens of the Stone Age, but I'm talking about the band that comes along that even pisses those guys off. Where they're like, I don't know about these kids. Like, I don't know about this. But that I, kind of. But do you think maybe, do you think that the, the taste has been fucked out of all those mouths to the point where like, yeah, you know, know, like here comes Marilyn Manson on stage upside down on a crucifix of TVs. And you're like, wow. Yeah, exactly. Buy a t-shirt, gotta go. I'm not putting the guy down, he's great. I'm just saying like, wow. And people just kind of go like, and they go home. Yeah, you know that we, we've gotten to the but point where- But they're not where, blown away. Right, like maybe our balls are just drained of cum at this point where parents are taking their kids to Marilyn Manson. Going, well, yeah. Oh, he's got a Dracula cape on and he's jerking off on the Bible. This is great. Remember when I, remember I told you about Alice Cooper? Shut up, Dad. No, but it was so like, <clears throat> there is something like it's hard to, is our shock nerve just stamped flat? Is there nothing left or? Well, it very well could be. Let me ask you this. Here's something I noticed. and. I think you might find this interesting. Do you, re you remember years ago, Americans weren't used to being on TV and like, the, sir, can we get a word from you? And it's like, uh, uh, and he, yeah. they, they go up to the mic tentatively. Um, like, you know, they saw it once in a movie, you tap on it, is this thing on? And they'd be like, well, I, I think, I, and they're all stilted and nervous. And now they turn a microphone on someone at a fire or something and the guy goes, give me the mic. Anyway, check it out. And like, you're like, wow, he knows how to do sound bites. He's going right down right. the barrel of the lens. It's, it's a citizen who saw a dog get hit by a car. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> what the fuck? People are now ready for their 15 minutes. Yeah. They, are, they are ready for prime time because they've seen it so many times they, where they, they, where they are waiting for their moment. And when they get it, they're kind of camera friendly. I think we're going to get to the point where there, there's going to be It'll be the opposite of what Andy Warhol said. I think in the future, we're all gonna be allowed to be obscure for 15 minutes. Like you'll be allowed to not be brilliant. famous. And then you're gonna be pushed back out into your own reality show. You're like, oh shit, I gotta, you know, I gotta wipe my ass in front of the nation. Like, no, you just want, <laughs> I want 15 minutes just to take a shower by myself and have a quiet cup of coffee and then back on TV. Ah, oh, God damn it. Well, I, 
I think you're brilliant, and and, and uh, Thanks, I uh, w I swear to you, I will pay very close attention <laughs> to you. I, I I you know love your work, and I, I love where you're coming from. So. Uh, Damn, Whatever it is that you're doing, uh, keep it up, because uh, I, I will be there. So. I wish there was a bus that went from Sterling to D.C. I would have watched your damn shows. Oh, oh, I was stuck you, at man. home listening to um, Take a Look at Me Now with uh, Phil Collins. Oh, God. Oh, well. Please. <laughs> Thanks for being on the <laughs> show. Don't film this. Coming up a bit later on the show, an exclusive musical performance from Damian Marley. But first, a letter to my good friends at the FCC. Dear Federal Communications Commission, your actions of late are a bit confusing to me, so I'm writing to you to hopefully get a reply to clear up some questions I have. Remember a few years ago when you fined Howard Stern for that broadcast where he talked about a personal hygiene product called Spinkterine? How did you come to the amount of $495,000 for the fine? Was it by the letter? Was it by the syllable? Did you just make up a figure? Do you think that a person has the ability to turn the channel when they find the material broadcast to be objectionable? Or does the programming actually have the ability to paralyze the person and render them powerless to exercise any personal choice or responsibility? When you removed Bubba the Love Sponge from terrestrial radio, did you do that to protect me from Bubba? Remember when Bubba used to have Redneck Monday, where he used to bait rednecks and get them all mad that they were racist idiots? or Lesbian Tuesday, when women would call in and rub the phone on their crotches. I don't know about you, but these broadcasts never made me want to build a meth lab or blow up a building or even bring a gun to school. Sexual content seems to upset you, but violent content seems to be all right. That's kind of like the Bible. Not a lot of sex, whole lot of violence. I wonder what you think about the satellite networks for television and radio. It's where Howard and Bubba are now, and I know from listening and being on their shows, they say whatever the fuck they want. Is it just less work for you, or are you mad that so many of us have left home and are thinking for ourselves now? From what I can tell, it's the truth you find indecent. All the news outlets are owned by only a few massive corporations. That's a good idea, or is it just good capitalism? That was on your watch. News has gone from a content-based to a ratings-based racket with good time information for a country that has no money and a president on the warpath. That was also on your watch. And I know you may find the following sentiment indecent, but that's fucked up. If you can pull yourself away from American Idol for a moment to get back to me on this, I would really appreciate it. Henry. And now, here's Heidi May with this week's musical performance from Damian Marley. Thanks, Henry. Damian Jr. Gong Marley, the youngest son of Bob Tough Gong Marley, doesn't need his father's reputation to get noticed. His direct lyrics and brilliant live performances all over the world have been doing the talking just fine. With his latest album, Welcome to Jam Rock, which earned him two more Grammy Awards, Damian proves he's an undeniable force in music. Here to perform Move, this is the brilliant Damian Marley, Uncut. Yeah, well greetings in the name of Zimpian Majesty and Pride, this last side the first, Ja, Rastafari. Well, I mean, I'm Juna Gang in a dread, alongside the Empire, you don't know it, complete and entire scene. So let's say I bless. And this one is called Move, so check it out. Rastafari, I Hey! Babylon them position the queen and set the bomb And start chants some like the set the gun Any time they get some of this crap on Well I'm here to enchant with some long weapon Night vision upon the attack mission Coalition of politician get switch on If you look in the face of the newly bound The newly bound a face malnutrition Suspicion to what is them ambition Total destruction stops the ignition And the world still a fight to over religion Everyone have a right to a decision Superstition the people reflect upon Some the right and I'm a suspect of God They've lost in any darkness beyond And no shall escape them Check the one to zoo, exodus with the first day on Better put on your cocky uniform You a driver, even no engine on If you a rider, jump on a unicorn Lace the shoes if you use a pedestrian Run for the border like a Mexican And the arms smell green like a African Exodus, huh. Shout Check this. 
Chicken Mary, Ark is there, and tell them where about them save out there. Life is a road, so you drive with care. Now you came most cause you got no spare. Only follow in your atmosphere, and step on the gas and the start your gear. This just a fire, you do not care. Some don't share, and then just not care. I go, before they make a move on you, making moves and still move on, go true. Moving things where you're not supposed to move. Watch your move and where you're moving to. Who oh, you move with, you move with your crew. Move some food from above the avenue. Move up out and boost the revenue. Move up down and overlook the view. Move around and get from one to two. Make a rock move in the game you lose. I stand up and I reduce the move. Substance some and no man not going use. Metric measurement and not going to choose. Moving on and still you need a crew. Your keys are the only keys to move. Moving on in the blood. Trouble. Sugar Movement of the people Check that one, you know Send us another brother Moses Alright, send us another brother Moses Indeed, send us another brother Send us another brother Send us another brother Moses Alright, send us another brother Making moves and still move on, go through. Moving things where you're not supposed to move. Watch your move and where you're moving to. Who you move with, you move with your crew. Move some food from above the avenue. Move about and boost your revenue. Move around and overlook the view. Move around and get from what to do. Make a rock move in the game you lose. I stand up and I refuse to move. Substance of a room and I'm gonna choose. Metric measurement, man, I'm gonna choose. Moving on and still you need a crew. Your keys are the only keys for move. Moving on in the Lord. Yeah. yeah. Movement of the people. Yes, my lion. Hear this. Chill. Sugar. Thank you again to my guests, Damian Marley and Patton Oswalt. Now, before we conclude, in considering our soaring gas prices, polluted environment, and the oil-triggered unrest around the globe, I have to give this week's end credits to the Honda Motor Company and Alexandra Paul. In 1999, Honda became the first major car company to introduce a hybrid gas electric car in the United States, the 70 mile per gallon Honda Insight. Although the Insight did not enjoy the mass consumer appeal of later hybrid models, Honda was still the first to take the risk in setting the hybrid movement in motion. As showcased in the important documentary, Who Killed the Electric Car? Actress and activist Alexandra Paul courageously stood up to GM and the destruction of their environmentally friendly electric automotive line. Alexandra protested for 27 days ultimately resulting in a two-hour standoff with GM transport trucks and 20 Burbank police officers. She ended up being arrested for her stance, but her bravery helped bring some much-needed attention to the GM assault. So, with foreign motor companies continuing to dominate when it comes to responsible forward thinking, I respectfully request the very same whistleblowers questioning who killed the electric car to also consider making the equally necessary follow-up who killed the American car. Thanks as always for joining us and we'll see you next time.